day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Uh, Elder, I asked you one time before, I don't know if you remember, Josephus, the Jewish Wars. Did you read that? You yeah. told me about that. You didn't read it yet? I had not read it. Mm -mm. But you... This, this, you read the Jewish Wars, right? I don't think so. Josephus, the historian, Josephus. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And he, Josephus went through how, the, uh, how Israel failed, how Jerusalem finally failed, the Jewish Wars, where... The Romans actually uh, destroyed the temple. They, they went out of, they went all those different places and killed all the strongholds of the Jews and even changed the name of the country to Palestine, if y'all remember. Uh, but my point was they did that because the Jews, the zealots, the people who wanted to do the rebellion, they finally took root after Jesus' crucifixion. They're the ones that fought, tried to fight the Roman soldiers because they didn't want the Romans to rule over them. You remember that? That's what a zealot was for. Right. A zealot wanted to bring back the kingdom of David. They yeah. wanted to have a free nation again. And all of that was noble causes. I, do you agree? That was noble causes. That's pretty funny. They wanted to make Jerusalem great again. <laughs> Did you? Oh man, that's a good one. I like that. I like that. I like that. That that is true. <laughs> that is true. Remember they said and you, that what the scripture said. When will you restore the kingdom? You know, they wanted to make it great again. Well, Jer Jerusalem was destroyed uh, quite a few times. You know, the, the Chaldeans, remember the Bible says that God raised up the Chaldeans? Yeah. And the Chaldeans came in, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Persians, when they came in, and they took them, they burned down the city and took all the, uh, the artifacts and the gold and stuff and took it on back to, uh, to Persia. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, hey, look, they, they've been destroyed several times, you know, and, and, and uh, remember, Nehemiah and, uh, and uh, Ezra. And yeah, yeah, Ezra. They yeah. came back and, and uh, rebuilt the church and reestablished re the Israelites again. So, you know, it's, it's been going and coming for a long time. But I can't, I can't believe that they are as quiet as they are today. Well, they got their, they, they have a nation, you know, so yeah. they, everything now is under their control and they're very powerful. They're a very powerful little nation too. They are, you yeah. know, but they've been attacked. You remember the six day war? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They won. <laughs> and they won. They, That's right. They came down to the last few tanks and they still won that battle. The war won, man. I mean, my fact is you really could say that was divine intervention because if y'all, if you read the history of that six day war, the Egyptian were coming across, got all their tanks and everything else. They, did y'all know they left their tanks and ran back to Egypt? No. They left the tanks. <laughs> what happened? And they said that they were afraid that they thought they heard something or they thought that the, the, the Egyptian, I mean, the Israelite uh, jets were coming and were going to blow them all, you know, blow them up. I guess if they didn't have air protection or something, because most armies, when you move, you have air defense. Yeah. As well. But yeah. they, I mean, I don't know any. Why would you, look, just turn the tank around. <laughs> they couldn't move fast enough. <laughs> and, and take your tank with you. No. God, what God did is let God, God turned that thing around. They, they, after their tank, the Jews lost a lot of tanks and everything else. The Jews, I, I, one guy came down uh, when I was in one of the uh, sessions uh, where there was briefing. The Jews came and briefed on the military tactics and stuff. They said they got down to four tanks. Wow. Four tanks. And those tanks were at the Capitol to, to defend the Capitol. 
Uh, and because they had lost so many tanks in the field, they brought those tanks to go into battle. God said, well, you know what? I'm going to take that. I'm, I'm going to kick the hell of people leave their tanks, <laughs> basically, and gave the Jewish people an elder tank that they didn't build. You know what I mean? Tell you know me ain't real. <laughs> that, I mean, that, that, that happened historically. Isn't that something? How you gonna say? I mean, I never heard anybody leave their tank. What? I ain't heard it like that before in my life. <laughs> I ain't never heard somebody leave their tank if you got the tank running. <laughs> Why would you run out of the tank? Hey, God. <laughs> but God, I agree. That's the truth. And, and that's why I think he's active in what's happening right now. I, I mean, think so too, yeah. it. I think so too. And I think he's also saying is, because I'm going to record this video, send it out. I'm saying is, the elder, is that let's do it Jesus' way. Amen. Jesus, they, he turned the world upside down. And he's still turning the world upside down. And all we need to understand, not play church, but just be real about who he is. I think we forget his agenda, and his agenda is to seek and to say that which is lost, and that's still being implemented. On right. both sides of the fight, there are lost people. On the black side of the fight, on the white side of the fight, because you know, we're talking about, and he's interested in saving everybody's soul. So yeah. we need to be dabbing. We got to repent. He, he did. Need to repent and be saved. Did white folk need to repent and be saved? Black folk need to repent and be saved? Because if you die, in, if you get shot in a drive-by, your problem just started if you get killed. Right. <laughs> you ain't no better off than the guy that was doing the shooting. Exactly. You get saved and your life is lost and you headed to hell. So, exactly. And, and but what the what I did on a personal note, I began to take up sides on the devil with the cardinal realm. These folk were right, these folk were wrong. And I do it right and wrong in accordance with whether they were getting their civil rights or they weren't getting their civil rights. We didn't help the fight at all. Yeah. And what I knew is Jesus did not do. Jesus did not case in point. The two brothers went to him. The one brother said, tell my brother to split the inheritance with me. And Jesus looked at him and said, man, who made me a divider between two of you? Exactly. I didn't come down here and sell these, 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 these social issues. No, brother. Going on here. No. I'm here to save your soul. I'm not here to talk about you owning, you, <laughs> you who right or who wrong with this. He was interested and he stayed focused on the salvation of human soul. Exactly. Because what we understood was that once we got the life of God in us, Come on. we could inherently do those things that were right. Exactly. We wouldn't That's be racist if we got God in us. Yes, sir. Because you ain't gonna make a lot that's gonna stop a brother from being a racist. Right. If you beat him down, he's just gonna be a beat down racist. They lost the war, but they're still fighting. And then they try to rewrite it, right? That's why you got the monuments and everything else, because no. let me rewrite it. Let me, let me rewrite history. You ain't changed my heart yet. I'm still in it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not at you right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Exactly. His, his fight is to change our very heart, is to give us a new heart. You know, take the old stony thing and get rid of it, give us a fresh heart. So, to really give us life. And we cannot do that through cardinal means. Cardinal I know means it. Do not change a man's soul. You know, Elder, another thing too is that the, <clears throat> we as a church, and I'm talking going all the way back to, I guess, from slavery up to, uh, to now. Uh, remember, they, somebody said it, and I think you agree with it. And I, I think it's changing with some of the mega churches, I'm thinking, but they were saying that the most divided time uh, of the week was well, on Sunday Christmas. morning, 10 o'clock. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? In other words, the, the, as, as the body of Christ preaching the gospel, maybe we, one of the things I guess we probably want to make sure is that we are a body uh, of believers. And the body of believers probably should have been some more emphasis of mingling. You know, remember they used to do back in the uh, some of the other church, traditional churches, you may go visit another yeah. church, right? But you always uh -huh. visit another black church. You know, black church, go visit a black church, right? Yeah. And, and a white church, go visit a white church, where it probably uh, would have made sense of that mingling together exchanging services sometime together 
uh, between the blacks and the white churches so that we don't have a black church or a white church or a Korean church or a Hispanic church, but we have church. church. <laughs> and church consists of all of us. Maybe that would be one of the things that helped. You know, we had to integrate the uh, school. Maybe should have done some more better work on integrating the ministries too. And I know people want to say this, I want to feel comfortable. But at the same time, though, I think if the body of Christ, another good social change would be, is to expose ourselves to one another so that we can see, hey, that's my brother, yeah. you know? That's my sister in Christ, you know? Because that's the label God gives us. But what the world wants to give us, and, and sometimes even racism, when they put it together, they, they, racism teaches people to see somebody a certain way. Yeah. And, and I like what uh, uh, Chris was saying was, as long as we're segregated, the parents can continue to teach division and, and paint a picture of, of, hey, these people are strange. Uh, these people are murderers. I mean, that, what, do you, what, what was started on that campaign in 2016 is yep. probably eerily similar to what people are telling their children at home. At home. You see? And and Elder, I got another slide for you. <laughs> and, and 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 this slide is talking about the difference between spiritual and cardinal. Amen. Walking in the flesh or or uh, After the walking in the spirit or bearing the fruits of the spirit. But the first one just said I'm the Jesus way, just like the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of of, of heaven or kingdom of God. Oh. I'm just showing in John 14, you know, John 14, 6, that Jesus said unto him, Look, for us is the body of Christ. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. If we could do things, we got to follow the truth. We got to follow the life that comes through Jesus Christ. And I think we can make changes socially if we follow Christ. So, Elder, Galatians 5, 16. I got 16 to 21, and then the other the other verses will be the fruits of the Spirit. Okay. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Well. Now the work of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelation, and such like, for which I tell you, and which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they would do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And we ain't talking about, we ain't talking about going to heaven, are we? We no. talking about the Bible, because the Bible oh. says, seek ye first the kingdom of yeah. heaven, kingdom of God, right? Right. Oh. In other words, any movement is not seeking him first, not seeking the kingdom's way, then it's like you say, Elder, it's not going to last. It doesn't sustain itself. Okay. It has to move toward the kingdom. And I'm saying is that if we send this out and when we send this out, if we're trying to talk to the body of Christ, hey, it's time for us to step out now. It's yes, time sir. for us to glorify God, to yes. make changes. These police reforms and all this other stuff to include our own reform. If, if if the rest of society can recognize us as believers, meaning brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ, maybe, maybe Elder. Oh yeah. They may not be do the things that some of them do, but as long as we stay separated, and I'm not saying we are, but I'm saying I think mega churches are definitely showing a lot of integration, I believe, anyway. But 
the, as long as the young people are getting to see and, and hearing that, Dad, you said that that black man is a murderer, that black man is a killer, a rapist, a vicious, a strike. He's just just bad. But but it's hard to say that and say, Dad, is that is that a Christian? Is, is that a, is that is that a brother in Christ? Is that, is, is that somebody walking Jesus? <laughs> you see, what I'm saying. To at least get us teaching our children, this is what we view ourselves to be believers in Christ. Amen. And then go ahead and read the, the, the 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ has crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, we do not also walk, I mean, let us walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. And then you see that one of them, I'm seeking first the kingdom. But the, the, you, you see what I'm saying is, there's a description that's already given for a believer. That when somebody sits there and say, Dad, I can't, if you're telling me these people go to church, and these people sitting there are believers, then you can't tell me they're murderers and rapers. You, so something is wrong. Are they saved or they're not saved? And if they say Jesus Christ, their personal Lord is saved, which is the beginning of a foundation, then I can't, then you're telling me these people are not rapists and murderers, but maybe these other people. <laughs> Right. It's possible. The one thing I found out was that even though we were illiterate and couldn't read, they were not very much far ahead than we were and didn't read. Yeah. They, weren't, they, could, they couldn't get the book, but most of them listened to whoever it was that was teaching them and ate, bought into what they were saying. Right. So, have been used to pervert the thinking of both slaves and slave owners, or I mean, uh, overseers and slaves, and, and, and the whole society has been lied to. Yeah. And everybody bought the lie. The exactly. only issue we did, we didn't woke up and realize it was a lie. <laughs> and, and we getting them, as they say, getting the men out of our eyes. Their eyes are just coming open. And they Come don't on like, now. They don't, they don't want to eat the fact that Donald Trump hates them too. They think the devil loves them as well. Everything that he does for them is like, it's, it's received. But they got to realize that Satan came to destroy them as well. And I say that because this occurs in our white churches. Our white churches will side in our blacks too for racial reasons political reasons more so than the kingdom reasons and jesus himself says my mother and brothers and sisters are those who do the will of my father of my father yeah so we have divided the family up along racial lines along political lines yes sir <laughs> didn't accept even that but two lines you either with the lord or you wouldn't there you, you go or you wouldn't follow them Exactly. And that's how he made the determination as to who was in the family and who was out of the family. Right. And we are still to grow today. And I think maybe when he talks about judgment taking place in the household of God first, that's what the first the first barrier that we are to overcome is the division in the church. Exactly. So we can I go out there right now and undo everything. Hey, you went mute, Elder. You went mute. You went mute. You did it yourself. I didn't do it. Your, your mic is mute. You got to unmute it. I don't know. You must have touched something. I'm up there. Yeah. <laughs> it's your time to stop talking. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. You got to repeat what you said because we hear it. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> no, no. No, I was saying that, that it said judgment will begin in the household of God. And we're the ones that's got to come together first. We have to overcome. The, the, the barriers that keep us apart in order that the world can even have an example of what righteousness looks like. Yes, sir. We are the express image of the invisible God right now. We are the light of the world. We are the one to reveal things that are supposed to be. And and we have got to get past that. So there's a lot of false teaching that took, that took place on all both sides of the fence. White people have been yeah. lied to concerning Christ as well. Right. To the knowledge of the truth, we have to embrace that truth and live in accordance with it. First. 
In culture, all this garbage that they're putting out there. Because there's so, oh, so many lies going on right now. It's ridiculous. Both sides are lying. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I think. I think that's what I'm saying is doing the kingdom grace first. Amen. You need to get people to start looking at us as the body of Christ Amen. and start looking at one another as brothers and sisters. You know, and then any movement we make, I think any movement, if you talk Black Lives Matter, if you're talking about uh, uh, any other social justice movement, if it if it includes the kingdom first and putting it first, uh, and if we're talking about raising our children, we're saying this, look, I don't know about all black people, but I can tell you anybody that accepts Jesus Christ is their personal Lord and Savior, that's my brother and sister. Amen. And, and, and they're not rapists, they're not murderers. That, that, that white brother that's a body of Christ, he's not a KKK, he's not a skinhead. He's, he's a child of God. And I, you know what I mean, I'm saying this, our perception and then being able to, us, us reading and preaching the gospel, is to view us the way God, because we're supposed to be, and you check me wrong, Romans 12 too, right? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so we can conform who? To the image of him, right? The image of God. We are transforming toward the image of God. But you know, the beauty of this is that right now, we are being prompted to do that. Yes, sir. Uh, we have been, we have come through a span of time that was just totally focused on cardinality. And we've come through that now, and I thank God for the opportunity to experience it and get past it. Yes, sir. And now we've been pushed into a place of spirituality that we are really not versed at walking in. <laughs> we really get to the point where we realize, like, hey, the family really is everybody that believes in Jesus. Oh, okay. Come on now. Come on. Regardless of color, regardless of color skin, regardless of, and look, you remember all the crusades, or at least all these, when the Catholic movements went out, they, they went to preach to God. They try to bring the gospel in too. I ain't talking about the ugliness side of the people, but they still try to bring in the gospel, yeah. right? They still try to bring in the belief because this is a if this is a Christian nation, which we call it. This is a Christian nation. I think Barack said it was post-Christian. <laughs> huh? See, I believe Barack said it was post-Christian. It's you know what? It, well, I think the point is the fact that it was found on Christian principles. It's still Christian, it's still you know. <laughs> And, and and the fact is that we we give free choice for you to be a Muslim. We give you free choice to be a Hindu. We we give you that free choice because we're not afraid of the gospel. We're not afraid of showing people who we are as Christians. You know, anytime you try to suppress people's belief and take free will from them, you you're not being effective. But effectively, the saying is, despite what you believe in despite what you think you've been heard. We're gonna preach the gospel and live the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that any movement, and that's what the title is called, Defeat Social Injustice. How? By seek ye first the kingdom mm -hmm. and Definitely. allow the kingdom to be part of it. Hey, look, we saw the world try to use it on that day where somebody, I ain't calling the name, the elders I call the name, but I ain't calling the name, but there was a peaceful protest. And somebody sit there and got the National Guard and the, and the police to clear them out. And violently too, throwing rocks and, I mean, shooting rubber bullets and tear gas and batons and clear them out. And didn't have the audacity to walk across the street. Upside down too. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but the point was, Elder, and that probably was the biggest mistake anybody could have done. Oh, that's funny. And, and probably don't be recognized it because now you, you're trying to, look, you're trying to play the kingdom. <laughs> he playing with the Lord, right? You see what I'm saying? Is you playing the kingdom now. Trying to punk God. <laughs> huh? I said he trying to punk God. It's like nothing you do gonna work from this point forward, brother. <laughs> like, <laughs> Mister said Sunday. He said not a mistake or what? Yes, when, when, he, when he went there, did that pose, and took a picture of that Bible upside down, that was not a mistake. He did what? <laughs> he did. It was a mistake on his part, right? Don't, don't, don't you know that Bible upside down? You know that, that is the exact same thing that Hitler did. Hitler took a picture of the Bible upside down. Did he? Really? Yes. Yeah. Cut up. I didn't know that. <laughs> Cut up. 
Kitty. You gotta look that up, man. That's so you trying to tell me he knew what he was doing, huh? That's the truth. He wanna know? Did, 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 you think he didn't know what he was doing? Like he oh. knew what he was doing. It, this, this is his base. It's racist people. What do you mean? That is the ultimate racist symbol. You know what? Let's go back and look at all, all the things that he did. You know, the things that he's saying now, you know, that the uh, uh, Fox News brought up about uh, the slogan that they said they used way back in 2015 about some about the pigs and go good with bacon or something like that. And then he trying to get quoted. You know, he's been he's been giving little hints, you know, and, and all this time. Uh, and I bet you somebody knows what that's all about. Oh, yeah. Some organization knows exactly what that's all about, you know. The little stuff that he says, and then he goes back later and says he, he, it was a joke. He said it sarcastically. You're right. He ain't saying nothing sarcastically. He, he's giving hints to somebody out there. Somebody out there know what he's talking about. He called him dog whistle. Yeah, they, there's a sign that, yeah, he's communicating with somebody. He's communicating with somebody out there. But, but I'll tell you something, though, gentlemen, I'll be honest with you. I thank God communicating with all of us to let us know he's in control. And, 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 and I think we've given the leeway to continue on and the encouragement to continue on fighting the fight in, in the form of the kingdom of God. We don't, we can't, we don't have to get caught up in the flesh. We can't get caught up in the flesh to be effective at gaining people to the kingdom. Yeah. Is, no matter what their agenda is, no matter what their secret societies are doing, he got the foot on the neck. You talking about the foot on the neck? I mean, really? He, he really right. Has. Well, I got two things that I, I want to say. The first one is that uh, Pastor Taylor, when you was talking about the the mega churches and you know the kids going on going in there and they see the black folks and thinking about what the what their parents have told them about us and vice versa but if we look at the scriptures you know everybody in the scripture that that were somebody they had flaws you know jacob was a jerk I mean, <laughs> even elijah was a, 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 a had a flaw you know if yeah. you read if you read the 19th chapter of uh first king i think it is where uh, god told elijah you know to go ahead and, and make a Jahu, anoint Jahu so he could be the king of Israel, to anoint the other guy so that he could be the king of Syria, and told uh, Elijah, said, and go ahead and anoint Elisha. In other words, to take your place, because your time is up. You know, he went and, and hid in the desert, talking about everybody, nobody else was, uh, was, was uh, all the prophets were dead, and he was the only one alive, you know? And so God just said, okay, so it's, it's, you want to retire, huh? So he went ahead and retired it. And the other thing is that Philippians, you just read all the fruits of the Spirit. You know, if we're supposed to be living by the Spirit, I'm talking about Christians now, then our fruit ought to be showing. Yes, sir. You know, we ought to be showing love. We ought to be showing joy instead of complaining. And we ought to be showing long suffering. We don't like that word. And, 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 and especially self-control. And you'll find most Christians are not, uh, that fruit is not growing on them. Wow. So it's some, something wrong with us, us Christian guys. And I, I've been, been, been really uh, critical on myself from saying, that, hey, I got to come up in those areas. I got to always show love. Regardless of how I feel or how I'm treated, I got to always show the Bible says that they will know, the world will know that we are his disciples by the love that we have for one another. Amen. You know, so we got to come up in that love category. We got to come up in that joy category instead of running around self-pitying ourselves, you know, about things that we think that's going to have happened to us. You know, it's going to happen. The Bible said it's going to happen, you know. So... We we he said that many of the affliction of the righteous, you know, but God will do what? Deliver us out of all of them. 
So we're going to have affliction. We're going to have people to talk about it. Look what they did to Jesus. And he had the power to keep them from it. He had the power to even keep them from talking. But he didn't. He didn't utilize it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So what about us? You know, and he turned the and he we, turned the world upside down. And I'm saying turned we turned the world do, upside down. Exactly. That's right. It, I think it, it shows the ultimate power of love. And that's yeah. the, he, he was the embodiment of love. He was the manifestation of love. God is love, and he's the manifest image of the invisible God. The man love is the power. And right. you can change people's hearts with love, but you can't change it with nothing else. There's, that's right. There's nothing that's right. else to change a man's heart except God and God is love. So